Lattice Earnings, uh, the leader in market share in high volume, uh, low power FPGAs. Yeah, if I knew how to throw up a slide, somehow after all this time, I'm still terrible at it. But Lattice does give some good slide. You know, they give great slide uh, at their earnings. And this particular quarter, the company did it again. The one slide, the results highlight, Pat, I'm just going to call a little bit of this out because, you know, in the market when right now we're in this sort of um, in this bubble where I say it's alpha versus beta, like we've heard uh, our friend Shamath Palapatia say on the All In podcast, um, Lattice is in a, in a in a stage of alpha, made a lot of great decisions. So congratulations to Jim Anderson and his team to basically focus the business on key seculars, focused on edge, focused on automotive, focused on data center. And um, it's starting to, uh, you know, bear fruit for the company. So you saw 28% year on year growth, 69% margin, uh, which it considered 700 basis points of expansion and huge growth in its earnings per share, 68% for those of you that can't see the screen. Um, but what was really great is, as expected, the markets they were in that are high growth, that are going to be resilient and robust through any sort of period of contraction, continue to grow. 35% uh, year over year in their compute uh, and com, uh, com communication compute. So that's what we talked about there. And then, of course, their industrial and automotive business, you know, the hardened edge and the automobiles also saw 30%. Surprising that we saw a small but, you know, 1% contraction in consumer, you shouldn't be surprised. Just listen to what we talked about when we talked about AMD and Intel. That particular space is taking its lumps right now. It also uh, gave the company some solid growth over their previous period when we did see all the acceleration into areas like consumer and PC. And Pat, you know, what I think is, is most interesting about the company is it's been very aggressive in its, in its innovation. It's um, you know, it's got the small FPGA platform. It's moved up into mid market. It's got an ORAM solution. It's got security and bias solution, bios solutions to help companies protect their data center. Um, they've, they've made some good inorganic acquisitions, small but meaningful in areas like AI to expand the business. Um, and and frankly, you know, the company has proven that FPGAs are having a moment. So. Pat, you've heard me say this a few times on our different pods, semiconductors are having a moment. Well, FPGAs are also having a moment. That's why I think we feel good about AMD and Xilinx. And I think that's also why we uh, feel really good about Lattice is FPGAs are proving that they can be done, they can be affordable, they can provide a layer and level of flexibility and that companies are increasingly adopting them. And just so everyone knows, in case you don't follow Lattice, we don't talk about them as often as some of the other bigger semiconductor companies but we do talk about them somewhat regularly. This is a company that products and solutions are in uh, alongside many of those bigger names. They're in alongside an AMD or an Intel and a data center. They're in alongside an NVIDIA. They're in alongside, so this isn't an or thing. This isn't some small semiconductor trying to grab market share from the, the big semi companies. This is a company that has very specific purpose-built solutions in these industries that we mentioned, and they're getting a lot of momentum, a lot of growth, and they've been able to really hold up well throughout the pandemic. Wow, I, there is, you actually did leave me a lot of content. Uh, I did, uh, right? Uh, for sure. So uh, one thing I wanna point out, and, and let, me, let me share this, um, let me share this screen real quick. Oh boy, hang on a second. There we go. If you're a company, uh, if you're an investor and you're looking for a long-term play and listen, I'm not an investor. I don't give investment advice, but look at this curve. Look at look at the steady progress. And here's the irony. All of this had to do with a major change in product direction and product uh, velocity. Uh, what Jim Anderson and his team did is they completely changed the target markets that they went after. They still service some of the consumer markets, but they really took a a hard a hard right very similar to marvell on more uh b2b a uh, type of 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 opportunities and you know we can debate whether automotive is consumer or or commercial but but you get uh, you get the idea and um changing investment increasing velocity you, you very rarely see curves uh, like this now it's great and all to talk about what happened today and what happened yesterday, but but let's hit let's hit tomorrow. You know, you you had 
uh, talked a little bit about getting into the mid-range. They haven't uh, launched their product yet, but what they did say on their earnings call is that in Q4, um, they are going to have an event to talk about this. And you can see the graph up there. It's essentially doubling their TAM. And this is going right at the heart of what Intel and now AMD FPGAs uh, provide. Uh, but there's there's a big difference here, okay? Uh, AMD and Intel FPGA, they're really focused on using the FPGA as a way to create data center SOCs. And they're also focused on the highest performance FPGAs, not bringing new solutions out in the mid-range. What Avant is, is a brand new product in the mid-range of FPGA. So in the marketplace, you're going to have AMD and Intel with older designs and older manufacturing versus Avant, which is a newer design with newer manufacturing. Now, what Xilinx and AMD have going for them is typically when you build in an FPGA, if it's in a you know, uh, uh, a single board computer or something like that. Very rarely do people have the motivation to change. But I believe that um, Avant will win many of the new designs because, quite frankly, it, it's going to have a cost, performance, and power advantage. Um, that's just that's me speculating right now. But it's it's just I mean, why else would Lattice be investing so much to get in here? The the only Thing I don't 100% agree with you on, Daniel, is it's competing with other FPGAs uh, only. I believe that with these uh, packs, with these software packs, uh, Jim and his team are actually going against uh, controllers, okay? And that's just a fancy way of saying low-level ARM uh, processors and ASICs right, for, let's say, machine learning, right? Um, so I do think at some point, and, and you know, by, by making it easier for OEMs and ODMs, uh, they are going to have to, and they will start going head-on against other types of, of silicon. Not GPUs, okay? That's, that's not going to happen, but against, uh, uh, more against, ASICs and uh, controllers. Whew. Yeah, so so just quick, uh, you hit that on the head. I guess I wasn't, uh, I'm not correcting myself, but I do want to just say, of course, there's always overlap. There's always going to be overlap. I just mean that for people that are a little bit less familiar with a Lattice, this isn't the kind of company where you're basically saying, oh, you know, NVIDIA is so good, Lattice doesn't have a chance. They, they, yeah. They're very yeah. Uh, aware of where they fit the market. Um, and they've been able to capitalize very well on the fact that they understand their purpose. They understand where FPGAs make a lot of sense and they've been able to enter the market. Definitely going to have some competition. And by the way, every, if you get bigger, competition is inevitable. The bigger you get, the, the more uh, you know, you, your products find their way into, into markets, the more the bigger competition is going to look for ways <laughs> to capitalize on that market. So um, good points. I appreciate that, uh, that kind of circle back here, Pat.